वेलकम टू द आई एम एस गेट अकेडमी आई होप यू आर ऑल गुड एंड ऑल्सो योर प्रिपरेशन गोइंग इन ए राइट डायरेक्शन माई देयर आई एम कमिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू विथ ए सीरीज ऑफ स्कोर बीट बूस्टर ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट हीट ट्रांसफर बेटा हीट ट्रांसफर इट इज अ वेरी इजी सब्जेक्ट वाई वी आर hi devanshu why we are called this is a easy subject why because if you study heat transfer na thoroughly you damn sure that you have to solve all the problem related to the gate examination but mind it your revision should be very very clear that means what's the notes will provide what the notes will provide what is the textbook or a booklet you uh, you have and previous year gate question these all three factor which will boost your preparation particular for the subject of heat transfer my dear there are three subject in which you have a different mode what is that number first thermodynamics number second fluid mechanics and number third heat transfer yes yes ahmad it is very useful why because it is useful according to you according to the purpose is that what what type of question and what in that in that 3 hour and tomorrow we have also a 3 hour of the second part of heat transfer in this we have to give a very crisp idea how to prepare within see heat to prepare the heat transfer four and five days are sufficient why because the main content which have to prepare is convection see conduction heat exchanger and radiation these three topics are very easy you are understand at a one shot of when you are studies the problem is little bit arise in the convection so for the convection you go through the ims video lecture previous video lecture or any textbook when you study that convection it is a very easy but the problem with the convection is that if you have a knowledge about a strong fluid mechanics what is the topic which cover in the convection related to the fluid mechanics is the boundary layer that means if if you have a knowledge about the boundary layer na that means velocity boundary layer if you have knowledge about the velocity boundary layer you can easily find what is the thermal boundary layer the difference in the fluid mechanics and thermodynamics is that in the fluid mechanics we study the velocity boundary layer and in the case of thermodynamics we study the thermal boundary layer so in the throughout the subject fluid mechanics and heat transfer there are three conservation principle one is the conservation of mass other is the conservation of momentum and third is the conservation of energy so particularly when we study the conservation of energy more rigorously used in the subject heat transfer conservation of mass and conservation of momentum this we will study already this will studies already in the subject fluid mechanics so the conservation of mass gives the continuity equation conservation of momentum gives the euler's equation or a force equation or navier stokes equation and conservation of energy gives the bernoulli equation or any energy equation related to the fluid flow right so if you talk about the heat transfer we will discuss the three mode of the heat transfer i am discussing here what is that conduction convection and radiation conduction have further three parts in the conduction further have three part first is the thermal circuit if you draw easily thermal circuit you can solve conduction problem part 1 this is the concept of thermal circuit thermal circuit second second is that thermal circuit second is that lumped analysis lumped analysis if you have a knowledge about the lumped analysis that means it is the topic which cover the one non non dimensional number known as biot number and the biot number should be less than 0.1 okay and third is fin 
now your conduction is finished and these topics are literally very easy topic the convection there are two types one is force other is natural in the force convection we further study two types external force convection and internal force convection external force that means flow over the surface flow over the surface that surface is exposed to the surrounding and the flow is flow over the surface but flow within the conductivity within the uh, within the curved surface there is an internal force so internal and external force both have a mechanism mechanism wise differ right and third in the third context there is a natural convection see previously after uh, two and three uh, four and five year back the weightage of natural convection in the gate examination is very less but nowadays each and every time one questions you have to find in the convection particularly in the gate examination of the topic related to the natural convection so natural convection is also important in which we have studied the non dimensional number known as grassop's number right and radiation yes radiation you also learn about in you during your school level that means preparation of iit j examination radiation you are learn the difference is that there is a view factor that means a safe factor concept is there and also radiation radiation heat exchange that means radio radio city um, radio city radiation heat surface transfer between the two surfaces black body that means the principle there is a four and three law four and five laws laws in the radiation you can study thoroughly to build build your radiation chapter okay beta so literally this is a very easy topic so let's start with that let's start with the problem with convection my first problem is convection and particularly this is a natural convection and this is very important questions you may find in the upcoming gate examination also so what is the pre uh, first question is this is your first question see what is that there is a uh, i give you one model uh, i give the models of what is the question is there they see there is a flat surface see this is your flat surface which is like that this is your flat surface which is like that and the flat surface have a length 5 meter right and the plate have a surface temperature the surface temperature is given 60 degree centigrade and there is a water flowing over it on the surface the water is flowing with a velocity 25 degree centigrade and the velocity of the flow is given my dear this is your questions right this is your question now you can tell what whether this question related to the natural convection or force convection without study questions how can you judge that this is your force convection or natural convection see the velocity of the flow is given velocity of the flow is given u infinite or v infinite so that there must be a force fully flow over the flat plate so it is in this mechanism the force convection dominating over the natural convection so this this concept which combined with force and natural convection what is that see read the questions carefully consider a 5 meter long vertical plate this is a vertical plate at 60 degree centigrade that means the plate surface have a 60 temp temperature plate surface you can say yeah wall temperature 60 degree centigrade okay beta the forced motion velocity above which the natural convection heat transfer from this plate is negligible see the beauty that means you have applied the forcefully velocity of the fluid which is water so that the natural convection the effect of a natural convection will reduce thank you thank you so if we have if we have the dominating factor see the velocity it is given or not if there is no any velocity is given so this is a natural convection and if the velocity is given so it is the force convection dominating over the natural convection okay so 
heat transfer from this plate is so con uh, natural convection see the question natural convection heat transfer plate is negligible that means the convection through the natural convection why because the velocity is given the gradient of the velocity is given so we can neglect the natural convection right use water the, it is given the kinematic viscosity this is your kinematic viscosity beta this is a uh, printing mistake kinematic viscosity is 0.65 cross 10 to the power minus 6 meter square and this is your this equation this is your coefficient of volume expansion beta coefficient of volume expansion it is given 0 0.00040 kelvin per power minus 1 the coefficient of volume expansion it is very important while we are solving Hi Ankit, hi. Hi Ankit. Yes, yes, it is right. Yes. See, beta, no, if there is a plate, no, it is a not a average velocity, beta. It is a not at average velocity. See, I am telling you, this is given free stream velocity u infinite. Free stream velocity, it is a not a kind of average velocity. See, when the fluid, see very important, yes, ultimate racers who reply that this is the average velocity, please keep in mind, when the fluid is flowing over the exposed surface, that means there is no any enclosures, that means flow, it is not within that enclosure, yeah, within that tube, then the velocity is the always free stream velocity that means this plate the flow over the plate this is your plate flow over the plate all the points have a free stream velocity there is no any concept of average velocity so flow over exposed surface flow sorry see the flow over the flat surface this is your flat surface this is your flat surface so flow over the flat surface there is no any concept related to the average velocity you don't think like that this is the confusing this this will confuse you if the fluid within the internal within the conductors then the average velocity come into picture so don't think other right be focused this is your free stream velocity that means velocity of flow what is the velocity of the flow of air over the plate it is given yes it is the hydrodynamic they, they developed the boundary layer Yes, ultimate racer. There is no any effect of hydrodynamic boundary layer on the fluid. Yes, it is. It is developed the hydrodynamic boundary layer. But when they develop hydrodynamic boundary layer, we cannot say that the sir, if there is a flow over the flat plate. See, this is your flat plate. Okay, beta. If there is a hydrodynamic boundary will develop. So at any cross section, at any cross section, the velocity distribution is like that. See, so this is your uh, this is your free stream velocity u infinite, but the calculation of the flow parameter that means laminar or turbulent always will take the velocity of u infinite. See, the, when we calculate the Reynolds number over the flat plate and when we calculate the Reynolds number within the enclosures yeah, within the tube, what is the difference? The difference is that when we calculation over the flat plate, the Reynolds number of the velocity responsible is free stream velocity. When we calculate the Reynolds number within the tube, yeah, within the pipe, we calculate the Reynolds number according to the average velocity. So that in that case, the average velocity is important. But in the case of flow over flat plate, we don't bother about the average velocity where because all the calculation, all the parametric calculation that like a Reynolds number, your yeah, pressure, all the things, your yeah, shear stress, all the things are calculated over the free stream velocity. There is no any concept of average velocity please mind it ultimate tracer please mind it so no need to think that yes it will develop the hydrodynamic boundary layer so don't bo bother about that okay, sir if they develop a hydrodynamic boundary layer so we take average no hydrodynamic boundary layer will not need to that see if there is a boundary layer will develop in the enclosures so at the point at the point when the flow is fully developed then the flow is fully developed then throughout the flow throughout the flow is viscous then we can say that there is average velocity but there is a core reason in which the velocity will accelerate okay ultimate okay thank you beta so this is your concept okay now now this is a volume expansion it is given now it is very important here is that this relation it is not 
correct this this is relation given by given like that Grassoff's by Grassoff's by Reynolds the power square this is equal to 0.1 this relation is given this relation is given I give you some background this relation is given Grassoff's Grassoff's divided by Reynolds so here is Grassoff's number is given what is the Grassoff's number first we'll think about that what is the Grassoff's number this is given so the velocity this velocity free stream velocity you have to find it 2.62 meter per second 1.28 meter per second 3.8 meter per second and 8 meter per second the velocity we have to find it and this relation is also given so once you see that there is a any Grassoff's number then you think that sir this is a natural convection yes it may be but first we check what parameter that means Grassoff's number by Reynolds number k square what limit on what range the force the flow is natural the flow is yeah or a flow is uh, uh, force flow that means a natural flow yeah force flow yeah mixing of both this parameter will decide why because this is also a non-dimensional number the Grassoff's divided by Reynolds power square this is also gives the non-dimensional number and that non-dimensional will decide which mode will dominate that means either force convection will dominating over the natural convection yeah natural convection is dominating over the force convection yeah both of these this will decide let's first check it okay so beta we first add something physical mechanism of natural convection see the natural convection is happening that means a natural current will develop is due to the density difference is due to the density difference that means the hot fluid will have a lighter density and cold fluid have a higher density so it will develop a natural current so that there must be develop a buoyancy effect why because we know that the buoyancy effect that means a net force we know that the net force is equal to density of a body we know that minus density of the density of the fluid into g into volume volume of the body so the this force the net force which is exerted on the flow on the fluid this will decide the density difference this will decide the density difference okay no problem at all now there is one term is known as beta and beta is what coefficient of coefficient of volume expansion volume expansion what is the coefficient of volume expansion everyone please what is the coefficient of volume expansion the coefficient of volume expansion is it is nothing it is measured by the change in volume that means it measure the change in volume of the fluid with respect to temperature at a constant pressure with respect to temperature at a constant pressure that means beta is equal to 1 by volume into d of volume by d of t at a given pressure p at a given pressure p can we say that natural convection is driven by the density gradient where force convection is driven by the pressure gradient yes natural convection is driven by the density difference you are right and force convection is driven by the pressure gradient beta you think like that the force convection is what the force convection is what see driven is what driven is fluid very important question if you i am telling that such type of answer now it will take time be patient i will give you see the driven of the fluid have a three mechanism in all over the subject that means fluid mechanics thermo uh, heat transfer anywhere the driven of the fluid is three mechanism one is dragging of the plate that means there is a fluid see the beauty that means there is a plate over this there is a fluid and over the plate is there and now you pull the plate 
pull the plate the fluid will move but this this will not driven that means this fluid is not driven by any pressure it is driven by the force f that means in this case all the pressure at any section all the pressure are same so this fluid is not driven by the pressure so we cannot always say due to the three uh, two due to gravity how For, uh, three due to the pressure yes and first due to the force yes correct so the force convection we cannot say we cannot say that it is always driven by the pressure gradient no that means flow over the flow over the plate flow over the plate we know that the pressure along the plate that means dp over dx is what constant that means it is zero there is no any pressure gradient so we cannot say this is a this is the uh, pressure gradient we cannot say force force convection that means the convection that means the uh, advection effect thank you thank you that means the advection effect will guide due to the temperature difference there is a gradient that means the convection will develop due to the advection effect what is that that means the motion of the velocity if higher is the higher velocity of the flow higher is the higher advection so that higher is the higher convection we cannot say that there is a pressure no mechanism of the pressure yes when it is a internal flow when it is the internal flow that means flow within the closed duct yes the fluid is guided by the pressure gradient no problem okay so <coughs> there is a volume expansion okay beta now this will convert in 1 by density 1 by density dp over d rho over dt at a constant pressure and the unit is see this volume and the volumetric strain there is no unit the unit is 1 by t and t is always absolute temperature t is always in absolute temperature okay beta <coughs> now when there is a natural convection natural convection when there is a natural convection when there is a natural convection the volumetric expansion yani that means coefficient of volumetric expansion is equal to 1 by rho why because we density of the free stream over the plate i am talking about the over the hello atul i am talking about the flow over the plate so the density different is what density see there are three type of notation in in the heat transfer first notation is see beta see this will guide you see first is the first is the wall temperature which is known as surface and second is immediate to the surface t infinite and third is far from that that is surrounding there are three things there are three notation in the gate previous year gate there is very con big confusion over that so when you calculate when you calculate the advection effect or a convection effect always a temperature difference of wall temperature minus immediate to the wall not wall temperature to the surrounding temperature but when we consider the radiation always will differentiate wall temperature minus surrounding temperature surrounding temperature is that temperature which is not affected by the plate the temperature which not affected by the plate but this in a free infinite temperature is immediate to the surface that means when there is a boundary layer develop a boundary layer above that boundary layer immediate that boundary layer there is a free stream temperature or free stream velocity that means this temperature is nearer to the plate but this temperature is far from the plate it is like that okay so if we talk about the difference of density so rho d rho minus d of the plate divided by t infinite minus t okay beta so this is your and if you change this one 1 by rho 
rho infinite minus rho divided by t of t at any location of the x minus t infinite. So, this is your non dimensional number. Okay, this is your c. This is not non dimensional, that means this is your ratio of this density and divided by temperature. So, we can calculate also the beta. How to calculate beta? Why? Because in the when we solving Haha, Tw is equal to t no, 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 no. But as for the temperature profile, Tw is t infinite. No, 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 no. How can you say that Tw is t infinite? No, beta. No, no, no. Tw is not t infinite. Tw is the wall temperature. T infinite is the immediate to the wall temperature. How can you say that the sir as per as the temperature profile, Tw is equal to t infinite? No. How can you say that Tw is equal to t infinite? No. Tw is the wall temperature. If there is a heating, if there is a heating, so if the wall is cooling, so the temperature of the wall is higher than the T infinite. Achha, no slip boundary condition. Yes, but the no slip boundary condition, see beta, if you draw, see, if this is your plate, right, if this is your plate and let us say very carefully, if this is your wall temperature, right, and the fluid is flowing and the fluid is flowing with a temperature t infinite okay with a temperature t infinite okay now take t wall is higher than t infinite it may be t wall is higher than t infinite that means cooling of the plate now so if you if this is your any thermal boundary layer will decide by the will decide by the Prandtl number if there is any thermal boundary layer now, if we select any cross section, so this wall temperature is higher, this wall temperature is higher. So, the wall temperature is high, but the surrounding temperature, that means the fluid temperature is lower. So, this is your temperature profile. Where is the confusion? This is your temperature profile. This is your temperature profile. At the no slip boundary condition, temperature is also there. So, we cannot say that at the no slip boundary condition, T infinite is equal to T wall. No, ultimate reactor, it is wrong concept. Okay, it is not like that. T wall is deferred, T infinite is deferred. That means each and every, each and every layers of the fluid, the temperature, the temperature is varying. That means local temperature in between these two. Huh. Why? Because in immediate to the fluid. See, this is the, see, this is the technical language immediate to the fluid immediate to the wall that means that means above the boundary layer Bo where is the boundary layer form boundary layer form very near to the plate boundary layer will form very near to the very thin so the infinite temperature is immediate to the plate that means above the boundary layer yes you may think like that Ki, sir jo, jo, what is the infinite temperature infinite temperature is above just above the boundary temperature right within that that within that that the temperature is in between t wall and t infinite it is correct now it is correct within that boundary layer the temperature of the uh, uh, fluid is in between t infinite to t wall no anywhere the temperature within the boundary layer no any temperature is t infinite immediate to the fluid what is mean by the immediate immediate to the fluid immediate to the fluid but now very near to the plate and what is the very near to, to the plate when the we decide the temperature when the decide when temperature above the boundary layer why because within the boundary layer we cannot clear the what is the temperature why because each and every layer have a different temperature so within that layer within the boundary layer we cannot say that we can say that either on at the plate or above the boundary layer these two information had decided okay okay thank you thank you so this is your concept yes 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 within the boundary layer within bilkul okay now <laughs> this is your compressibility now beta so in the natural convection see very carefully in the natural convection in the natural convection what do we think beta coefficient of volume expansion beta is equal to 1 by rho density of the free stream minus density of the fluid this density is where is the density this density is where this density is within the boundary layer 
this density is within the boundary layer this density is above the boundary layer right divided by t minus t infinite this t is within the boundary layer this t within the boundary layer this t above the boundary layer okay now if you solve this this is rho density into beta t minus t infinite is equal to what beta density free stream minus density so we can say that the density difference density difference density difference is what density into beta temperature difference t minus this is very important equation now you can see that now you can see that zeta what is the f net the net buoyancy force the net buoyancy force is what beta net buoyancy force is what is density difference density difference that means density of the body matlab density of the body matlab this you can say that density of the body minus density of the fluid into g into density of the fluid into g into v so this is your density difference so that density difference and this is also a density difference so this density difference is see this density difference is directly proportional to the temperature difference this density difference is directly proportional to the temperature difference so the buoyancy effect is is a dependency of the temperature difference if there is a difference of temperature for the from the plate to the fluid from the plate to the fluid if there is a density difference it must it must be there must be a temperature difference if there is a temperature difference there must be advection effect there must be a convection effect so this is the beauty between the fluid mechanics and heat transfer this is the directly related to the how the density will change with respect to temperature due to the coefficient of volume expansion okay beta now now for an ideal gas we talk about the air for an ideal gas ideal gas coefficient of volume expansion is equal to 1 upon t absolute temperature it is very important and this t now this t t t is the temperature anywhere this is very important for ideal gas you always remember like that the vol coefficient of volume expansion is equal to 1 by t and t is always kelvin t is always kelvin t always we are taking always kelvin now now we take one number known as grassoff's number grassoff's number see beta very important grassoff's number grassoff's number what is that gr what is the grassoff's number beta what is the grassoff's number what is the grassoff's number See, Grassoff's number gr over the length throughout the length is equal to very important g beta t surface minus t infinite characteristic length l cube divided by 3 divided by kinematic viscosity ka square right. and what is this characteristic length this characteristic length this characteristic length it is nothing surface area divided by perimeter surface area divided by the perimeter this is your characteristic length now that means if there is a plate see very important if there is a plate if there is a plate beta see according to the temperature if there is see what see this is ha huh, yes you are right beta you are right ultimate reactor you are right see water is incompressible when we talk about the fluid mechanics in the fluid mechanics we don't bother about the temperature difference in the fluid mechanics we don't bother about the temperature difference right only we take a fixed temperature so in that case there is no much variation of the temperature so the throughout the water have its same density but when we talk about the 
heat transfer the hot plate and cold plate there must be a temperature difference so if there is a temperature difference the fluid have a varying density if there is a temperature difference the fluid water will convert it into fluid uh, water h2o will convert it into liquid to vapor so it must be a density different so there is a water so when we consider about the temperature factor the fluid may its behavior change it is not like that it is a incompressible it is clear the incompressibility incompressible will talk about the fluid mechanics why where we cannot bother about the temperature only bother about the motion of the fluid but in the case of heat transfer we are bothering about the temperature difference so the temperature difference will cause the density difference yes or not density temperature difference will cause the density difference see i hope it is clear see beta so this is your plate that means this is your hot surface this is your hot surface this is your hot surface now if there is a, this is your fluid beta if this is your fluid if this is your fluid ha huh, yes temperature difference yes beta temperature difference leads to density difference that's why we are proving na that's why we are dealing na this density difference leads to the temperature difference okay so this is a fluid and when this fluid will stick to the plate due to the no slip condition due to the no slip condition and this fluid have a warmer fluid what is that warmer fluid this is your warmer fluid now this fluid e fluid want to detach that hot surface so this fluid on this fluid there must be act in upward direction a buoyant force that means buoyancy force we are taking a warmer fluid which is which is attached to the plate and now now this fluid is want to drag is want to drag over the surface then surface will act a downward a resistance a resistance so that means in this direction in this direction there must be a friction force friction force or viscous force viscous force now relative magnitude relative magnitude thank you thank you tul relative magnitude of buoyancy force over the viscous force uh, that is a non dimensional parameter known as gresops number that means gresops number is a parameter to identify the buoyancy force whether the buoyancy force is dominating over the viscous force or not if the buoyancy force is dominating over the viscous force fluid will detach if the viscous force is dominating over buoyancy force fluid will attach so these two relative parameter the measurement of these two relative parameter is due to the gresops number is due to the gresops number and the gresops number is acceleration due to gravity why because if this fluid have a gravity effect g this fluid have a gravity effect g downward direction this fluid have a beta come volumetric expansion and there must be a temperature difference the wall temperature thank you subodh the wall temperature to the temperature which is far from the surface that means a free stream temperature and the characteristic length of the dimension and this dimension is surface area of the plate divided by the perimeter okay no problem and the kinematic viscosity and the kinematic this is the gresops number okay no problem at all <coughs> now now come back to the problem so this is your problem now beta see the very important 
if we determined if we determine this see this is the very important if we determined which mechanism is dominating either force mechanism or a free mechanism no no yes t grassops number is a buoyancy a buoyancy is a fluid see if there is no it is not like a it is very much visualized due to the vertical plate and our example of the vertical plate so that it is not like that sir grassops number is defined for vertical plate no always no not always it is also a horizontal force there see see beta see ek one second see if if there is a flat plate okay and this is your hot plate this is your hot plate fluid will come and it will move like that so in this case also there is a grassops number in this case also there is a grassops number there is a fluid the fluid this is your fluid this this is your fluid and this fluid will let's suppose this fluid will try to move in the upward direction so there must be a buoyancy force and in between that fluid there must be a viscous force in that higher is the viscosity see ultimate higher is the viscosity lower is the inertia that means if there is a high viscous fluid its inertial effect that means that means the motion of the fluid inertia which what inertia will guide the viscosity that means higher is the higher viscosity lower is the lower in inertia uh, higher is the higher inertia higher is the higher inertia lower is the lower velocity if the lower is the lower velocity that that means the fluid will nev fluid will very very difficult to move from the plate due to the density difference though there is a density difference see density is directly proportional to the density is related to the mass and mass is related to the inertia and inertia will gives the strong function of the viscosity if higher is the viscosity if higher is the viscosity viscosity is higher the motion is low when the motion is low inertia is high high inertia high inertia body have a low tendency to move yes ha it is defined it is defined but there is a viscous now so viscous we can define the inertia see yes it is in a rolls number but how to how can this if this is a fluid particle this is a buoyancy force above it fb what is the viscous force how can interpret the viscous force viscous force will in, interpret its inertia if the, this this fluid have a lower lower velocity high viscous fluid that means the tendency to move up is low and low so there is though there is a high buoyancy but there is a high buoyancy but there is a low movement of the fluid yes or not high buoyancy but there is a low high buoyancy that means higher is the density difference high buoyancy that means higher is the density difference but it have a low tendency to move why because the fluid have a high viscosity yes or not yes or not viscosity is sometime related to the viscosity is sometime related to the velocity and velocity is related to the inertia and inertia is related to the mass and mass is related to the density like that okay so it is not like that beta the grassops number is always defined for a vertical wall no no vertical wall no it is also any inclination yeah 90 degree 0 degree yeah any angle theta grassops number will define grassops number have no any criteria to that uh, vertical wall no it is very visualized visualization is very correct when we take a vertical wall so it is good right <coughs> now so come come with this problem so beta if we if the natural convection dominating over the force convection or force convection or dominating over the natural convection this will decide that means that means beta c very important i am telling you never found any book see ek minute see see grassops number if grassops number divided by reynolds number 
over the length, over the entire length, a square is very, very less than 1. See, if very, very less than 1, that means Gerasov's number is very less than the Reynolds number. That means Reynolds number is higher than the Gerasov's number. That means the Reynolds number is dominating. And the Reynolds number is dominating, the fluid have a motion. That means Reynolds number is dominating, that means fluid have a high motion. If there is a motion, that means there is a force convection. That means for the criteria for the force convection, Gerasov's number by Reynolds number is must be less than 1. Okay. So, in that case, natural convection effect neglects it. That means natural convection effect negligible. Natural convection effect negligible. Right. If Gerasov's number by Reynolds number k square is greater than 1, in that case, the Gerasov's number is dominating. And Gerasov's number is dominating. That means Gerasov's number is what? See. See, Gerasov's number is temperature difference. If Gerasov's number is dominating, that means a tem more temperature difference. A more temperature difference, that means it will, advection is more. But advection is triggered, advection is triggered. That means, which advection? That means there is a natural, that means Reynolds number is low. Reynolds number is low, matlab inertia, inertia force by viscous force. Reynolds number is low, that means inertia is high, that means inertia is, Reynolds number is low, inertia is low, that means motion of the fluid is less. That means motion of the fluid is less, that means it will convert it into natural convection. Right? That means in this case, force convection effect, force convection, natural convection, in this case, natural convection effect negligible, force convection effect. In this case, beta, Reynolds number is, see, Reynolds number is higher. If the Reynolds number is higher, natural convection effect is negligible. If the Gerasov's number is higher, if the Gerasov's number is higher, the natural convection is dominating. That means force convection effect is negligible. Is negligible. Force convection effect is negligible, right? Now, if the Gerasov's number divided by the Reynolds number k square is approximately 1, that means we cannot neglect, that means there is both, that means both effects are significant. Both effects are significant. So, in this question, in this question beta, see the beauty. This is your less than 1. This is your less than 1. That means Reynolds effect is more as compared to the Gerasov's effect. That means in this case, force convection is dominating. If the force convection is dominating, so we have to bother about the velocity of the flow. Then we have bothered about the velocity of flow. Otherwise, we cannot bother in the velocity of flow. So, there is a Reynolds number is dominating. Reynolds number dominating, that means inertia is dominating. Inertia is dominating, that means flow of the velocity is important. Flow of the velocity is important. So, we can, now we can assure that we have to find what is the velocity of the flow. So, <coughs> so first find Gerasov's number. Then find Reynolds number, square it, in which the velocity we can easily find. So, so from this one, we can say that, what is the Gerasov's number? You, you just want to calculate G into beta into solid surface temperature minus fluid temperature. Uh, this is a characteristic L3. Flow characteristic, see, characteristic length is defined over the external flow when there is a direction of the length is flow. That means if the direction of the length is a flow direction, then that direction is the characteristic length. So, in this case, in this case, beta, see, in this case, flow is along the 5 meter length. So, this is your characteristic length. This is your characteristic length, right? Now, so here LC, 
एल सी इज एल एल क्यू क्यू डिवाइडेड बाई काटिक विस्कोसिटी का स्क्वायर ना पुट ऑल दिस वैल्यू नाइन पॉइंट एट वन नाउ वट इज बीटा हाउ टू कैलकुलेट बीटा 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 यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट फर्स्ट वी कैलकुलेट द बीटा हाउ टू कैलकुलेट बीटा बीटा इज वन अपॉन टी एंड टी इज द टेम्परेचर इट इज गिवेन टी इज टेम्परेचर इट इज गिवेन हाँ यस इट इज गिवेन टी टी इज दट टेम्परेचर बेटा इट इज द टेम्परेचर टी इज दिस टेम्परेचर यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट जी इन टू बीटा एंड बीटा इज वॉट बीटा इज वन बाई टी एंड टी इज द फिल्म टेम्परेचर ऑफ द फ्लूड दैट मीन्स T infinite plus T of the wall divided by two. You divided this two plus. If you divide it in the, if you divide put in Kelvin, then you can calculate beta. Now from this one, when you calculate beta, this beta is point zero zero four Kelvin to power minus one. So put here. Point zero zero four, and surface temperature sixty degree, wall temperature twenty five degree, wall temperature twenty five degree, and L it is given five pe power cube divided by what is the kinematic viscosity? Point six five cross ten to the power minus six ka whole square. Now if you calculate, this has to be four point zero six three cross ten to the power three. This is your Grassoff's number. This is your ah uh, yes mean temperature yes mean temperature fluid mean temperature why because there is a two temperature is given na so this beta is calculated over the mean temperature yes ultimate it is right mean temperature this is the fluid mean temperature T wall minus T infinite divided by two put and plus two seventy three in Kelvin then it is beta now. This is your Grassoff's number. Now, what is the Reynolds number? R E is your U infinite L divided by mu. U infinite L divided by mu. Right. Put U infinite. U infinite is you have don't know. Because U infinite you can calculate. So U infinite length five divided by kinematic viscosity. It is your kinematic viscosity. It is your point six five cross ten to the power minus six. From this, you can calculate this one in terms of in terms of u infinite seven point six nine cross ten to the power six u infinite. Now you your you your relation it is given. What is the relation it is given? The relation it is given Grassoff's number to the Reynolds number the power square is equal to point one. So you have a Grassoff's number, you have a Grassoff's number, you have a Reynolds number in terms of u infinite. Put this one, square it, and find the velocity of u infinite. So from here you can find the u infinite velocity is what beta is 2.62 meter per second. 2.62 meter per second. 2.62 meter per second. It is okay. it is okay this is your complete information it is okay so it is it may be asked in the it may be it will be asked in the previous uh, uh, upcoming examination like that problem okay so don't confuse with that this is a very new problem now we take the next problem next problem is Yes, this is your next problem. This is your next problem. This problem. Yes, it may come. Why? Because, why? Because, beta. Such type of problem is never asked. This is this problem will ask. This problem is hard core of the natural convection. Why? Because you calculate the Grassoff's number. See what is gate. Gate is graduate aptitude chair. Aptitude chair. It is not numerical. It is aptitude type of question. That means you know the formula. First thing you know the formula. What is the physics of the formula? 
you know the calculation it is also calculative some part of the calculation you know the mechanism of that problem so all the things are combined so this that, that previous problem is very important to the exam point of view okay now see this is your radiation chapter question in the radiation see <coughs> see beta consider a hemispherical this is your surface i think this is your two surface surface number two this is your two surface and this is your surface number one it is numerical it is like that okay so see this is a black surface consider a hemispherical furnace this is a hemispherical furnace of diameter 5 meter this diameter have a 5 meter with a flat base base is a flat that means ha koi baat nahi beta no problem no problem don't think like that you no problem you just studies in this problem you have to a very much ideas about that what topic you can studies for the exam point of view okay so this is your diameter a diameter is a flat base it is your flat base the dome of the furnace is black that means the black the property of the surface is black and the base of an emissivity base the emissivity of this base that means this emissivity it is given base base emissivity it is 0.7 right base emissivity is given the base and the dome furnace are maintained a uniform temperature of 400 and 1000 kelvin that means the base the base is maintained 4000 that means if you base is 1 so t1 is 400 kelvin right and this dome is maintained 1000 kelvin okay no problem at all respectively the net radiation heat transfer from the dome that means from the dome to the base of the surface during steady operation very good that means what we think that what it is question is asking that means what is the radiation heat transfer from the dome heat transfer from the dome that means 2 to 1 we have to find it we have to find it please think we have to find it 2 to 1 what is the radiation heat transfer okay beta. now see <coughs> see this is your dome structure this is your dome right and this is your flat surface this is your flat surface this surface is one and this dome is two we have to find what is the heat transfer from 2 to 1 what is the heat transfer from 2 to 1 so this is your flat disc flat disc and if there is a flat surface if there is a flat surface if this is your flat surface the flat surface what the radiation will imitated by the flat surface it can never be strike to that same surface why because the surface is flat though so the view factor that means see if you what is that if you stand if you if you are standing on this flat surface so and you you see upward so from your movement of the your neck you can never see that flat surface that means the view factor for the flat one to itself for the flat one is zero there is no radiation will come again to the flat surface so it is one now what is the summation rule beta if one one plus if one two is equal to one the summation is one now if one one is zero so indirectly what is if one two is 
दैट मींस व्हाट द रेडिएशन इज वन मतलब 100% दैट मींस व्हाट द रेडिएशन विल ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम द सरफेस ऑल द रेडिएशन विल एक्सेप्ट बाय द कर्व सरफेस दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस वन ओके नाउ वी हैव टू वी नो दैट हीट ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम 2 to 1 heat transfer from 2 to 1 is equal to minus of heat transfer from 1 to 2 1 to 2 so once we find heat transfer from 1 to 2 just it's negative it will 2 to 1 so don't bother about the which which hit uh, from which surface to which surface heat transfer will there no you don't bother about that just go through the conservation of energy principle now what is 1 to 2 beta what is 1 to 2 heat transfer emissivity 1 1 to 2 that means emissivity we put e1 into area a1 into say factor 1 to 2 into temperature difference t1 pe power 4 minus t2 pe power 4 right now put all this value minus of epsilon point 0.1 area this flat disk what is the area beta pi by 4 d square so pi by 4 into d d is what beta d is what is the 5 meter pi by 4 d square 5 meter it is 5 meter ha huh. d is 5 meter no problem i think it is 0 0.5 no problem pi by 4 d square 0.5 d square into what is the 1 to 2 is 1 what is the temperature t1 t1 it is given 400 pe power 4 minus 1000 pe power 4 now if you calculate this will come 7.594 cos 10 to the power 5 watt that means 759 kilo watt this is okay no problem there is no any problem in the radiation it is very okay okay beta? this is very okay now so this is just the recapitulation of the formula and this will this may this type of question ask in one mark and damn sure fill in the blank NAT type this question ask in NAT time no any option you have to suppose to ask given okay now next this problem ah, ha, ha. this problem is very important and the same problem that same problem matlab, related problem will ask uh, previously asked in the examination gate exam but this is the little bit differ for that exam that problem okay beta? so what is that see this 1000 watt iron this is your iron pit you know the press iron press so on that iron press there is a flat surface on that iron press there is a flat surface so this is your flat surface okay the, when you do a press iron there is a flat surface is there so this is your flat surface right the iron the one part the face the uh, this is your flat surface of the iron the one face of that iron plate is exposed to the atmosphere and other face is exposed to the coil in which the heating coil is there and due to that heating coil the plate is heat up and you are you can easily press on that your cloth okay so this is an iron base plate iron board with base exposed to the ambient at air at 26 degree centigrade that means what is the ambient temperature that means this is the infinite temperature t infinite is given right the base plate of iron is thickness is 0.5 centimeter that means what is the thickness it is given 0.5 centimeter okay the base area the area it is also given why because the, the area it is like a triangular that is given 0.150 centimeter and the thermal conductivity of that base material is 18 watt per meter degree centigrade the inner surface of the base plate this is very important the inner surface that means inside the iron 
where you can hold that iron inside that iron there is a uniform heat flux why because in this side there is a coil is there so this coil will be produce a flux over that back surface right the inner surface of the base plate is subjected to uniform heat flux generated by the resistance heater there is a resistance heater which will generate a flux the outer surface of the blade base plate this is the outer surface this is your outer surface this is your outer surface outer and this is your inner surface this is your inner surface so outer surface of the base plate whose emissivity that means its emissivity is also given its emissivity is also given 0.7 loss of heat by the convection to the ambient air with an average heat transfer coefficient h h value is given that means from the base from the base to the surrounding there is a convection effect there is a convection effect right and that convective heat transfer coefficient h value it is given now as a wall by radiation to the surrounding surface of an average temperature this is the surrounding temperature c why because base temperature have emissivity it is also given so the radiation heat transfer there also be a radiation q radiation to the surrounding q radiation to the surrounding is also given is also be there in the problem and the, what is the surrounding temperature 295 kelvin okay no problem at all right this regarding this regarding any heat loss through the upper part of the iron that means in this part we can neglect any radiation we can neglect any heat transfer and the upper part why because it is very very thin so the area at that surface is very minimum so heat transfer responsible for that heat transfer is negligible so we can neglect the upper part right outer surface of the temperature then the outer surface temperature that means this outer surface temperature you have to find it that means wall temperature you have to find it wall temperature you have to find the option is given 900 600 758 and 325 okay so this is your problem you can very well aware to the problem see what why we take this problem why because in the conduction in the conduction there is one topic is that boundary condition how to apply the boundary condition to solve any temperature at any point so boundary condition is there see what is that there is a heat flux heat flux at x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to 0 there is a conduction start and at x is equal to l there is again conduction and at x is equal to l there is again convection and plus radiation convection and radiation so how can you think that see 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 beta this is your problem see there is a base plate there is a base plate see very carefully this is your base plate okay this is your base plate this is your base plate and this is your surrounding this is your surrounding now this plate have uniform heat flux this left face have uniform heat flux and we take the direction of this plate is in this direction this is your x direction and x is equal to 0 and this is your x is equal to l right at this face x is equal to 0 but at x is equal to 0 there is also a conduction there is a conduction there is a conduction and again there is a conduction at this phase and then there is a convection at this phase 
and there is a radiation right so this is your so this is your beta q convection this is your q radiation and there is a q conduction q conduction this is your q conduction okay now this is your surface surrounding temperature t of surrounding this is your t of surrounding now we can neglect we can neglect this in heat transfer in this direction so we can assume only the heat transfer is along the x direction that means it is a one dimensional heat flow that means it is a one dimensional heat flow and also and also steady state that means this is your what is the model of this problem model of steady steady one dimensional heat flow heat flow and the heat flow that means the temperature is the function of x only in the x direction temperature is the x only now what is given beta given surrounding temp is immediate pre stream temperature it is given how much it is given beta 26 degree centigrade right surrounding temperature it is given how much it is given 295 kelvin thermal conductivity of the base plate it is given 18 watt per meter degree centigrade now length of the plate it is given 0.5 meter emissivity of the base plate it is given 0.7 convective heat transfer coefficient it is given 30 watt per meter square kelvin and area it is given 150 centimeters this information you have this information you have now <coughs> this question related to steady steady state heat conduction equation what is the steady state heat conduction equation this have to always remember why because in the previous examination or in any examination of any any year every year in the gate examination this from this equation you can suppose to be see in your examination what is that beta c steady state heat heat conduction yeah as like a heat conduction equation what is the heat conduction equation heat conduction equation in cartesian coordinate cartesian coordinate that means x y z direction what is that beta d square t over dx square plus d square t over dy square plus d square t over d z square that means this is laplacian operation del square of t this is what beta what is that del square of t this is this is plus heat generation divided by thermal conductivity is equal to 1 by thermal diffusivity dt over dt this is very important equation yani del a square of t plus heat generation divided by k divided by 1 by this is your thermal diffusivity this is your thermal diffusivity it is very important and the significance of this is also very important if you do not know about the thermal diffusivity just go through the textbook and read this one why because this is very important property in the heat transfer and dou t over dou tau right see this is your zero this two equation this equation and this equation both are zero why because beta one dimension that means y direction and z direction it is zero one dimension right no information it is given that is it is heat generation or not so it is zero why because no information is given not given 
right steady this is a steady that means this is a zero any variation with respect any parameter with respect to time is zero why because the flow is steady that means steady flow steady so what's your equation see the beauty this is your equation do square t over do x square is equal to zero that means t is only the function of x that means we can write in absolute sense d square t over d x square is equal to 0. So, beta, this is very important equation. Sometime in the one, one mark question will ask this is what? This is what beta? This have a four information. Number first, this is your heat conduction equation. This is your heat. conduction equation number first number second in a one direction one dimensional heat flow what is the third assumptions there is no heat generation no heat generation and number four is that steady state heat flow steady state steady heat steady state heat flow steady heat flow steady state heat flow and one other example one other assumption which is hiding in this one that constant thermal conductivity k is constant constant thermal conductivity that means k this is your four assumptions in the this equation this is your equation now you solve it apply the given boundary condition and you find what you find what you want to find you find no problem so now see this on this face there is heat flux so what is the heat flux at there so this is your we calculate per unit area basis so what is the heat flux at x is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 what is that we know that heat flux is is equal to total heat transfer divided by area and this is what this is your power joule per second q dot is what power joule per second so the power it is given if there is an iron so in the iron you know the power why because when you buy the iron you must be given the power what power will consume so this power you have 1000 watt so 1000 watt divided by area you can easily calculate what is the heat flux what is the heat flux so this is your 1000 divided by area 150 cross 10 to the power minus 4 now this is your 6 6 6 6 4 watt per meter square so this is your heat flux this is your heat flux this is your heat flux now apply the first boundary condition what is the first boundary condition beta c there is a conduction at point at this point there is a conduction so what is the conduction here first boundary condition beta first boundary conditions what is the first boundary condition see we know that heat transfer is equal to minus k a d t over dx x direction we take one by area and yani q dot by a this is your flux and you know this and you know this is equal to minus k minus k d t over dx 
So, this is your first boundary condition that means you know the dt over dx divided by k that means this value you have 6, 6, 6, 6, 4 you have divided by k minus k. So, in terms of minus you know dt over dx that means the gradient of the temperature slope the gradient of this temperature slope you know at this point you know what so beta from this one this is your q that means this is your q dot is equal to minus k dt over dx you know now now we have to a temperature equation we have a temperature equation this is now we can integrate and use the uh, and find the equation this is your one this is your uh, if you integrate it if you integrate double integration so it is a t x is equal to c 1 x plus c 2 now from this c 1 and c 2 you can find easily and if you differentiate is d t by d x is equal to c 1 and d t by d x you have and dt by dx you have so you can find easily what is c value so dt by dx you have that means dt by dx is what beta dt by dx is what minus q by k is equal to c1 so what is the what is your q dot is equal to minus k into c1 right okay so from this one you can easily find c1 value so what is the c1 value minus q dot divided by k first constant you have now you have to find c2 value what is your c2 value beta what is your c2 value so apply the second boundary condition see at this surface at x is equal to l there is a convection there is a conduction and there is a radiation yes or not at x is equal to l yes or not beta so conduction is what minus k dt over dx and mind it x is equal to l is equal to convection is what h into t of wall minus t of infinite plus convection is what conduction e sigma t of wall pe power 4 minus t of surrounding pe power 4 now put all this value this is what beta k minus k and dt over dx at any x is equal to c1 and this is your h into t wall minus t infinite plus ipsla sigma t4 t wall pe power 4 minus t surrounding pe power 4 no problem so what is your heat flux this is your c minus q is q dot so heat flux is equal to h T wall minus T sir, in pre stream temperature ipsla T wall pe power 4 minus T surrounding pe power 4. Put all this value. You know heat flux. What is his flux? 6, 6, 6, 6, 7 is equal to what is H value? 30. What is wall? You have to find it minus infinite temperature 26 plus emissivity 0.7 into a volumeable constant 5.67 cross 10 to the power minus 8 into wall wall temperature that means t wall plus 273 multiply 273 pe power 4 why because it is in kelvin minus 290 pe power 4 now you have to find a wall temperature now you have to find a wall temperature what is your wall temperature if you calculate this one if a calculation 6 6 6 6 7 7 
equal to thirty three or first calculates point seven in five point six seven cross ten to the power minus eight twenty nine. So there is T wall seven fifty eight. T wall approximately seven fifty eight degree centigrade. Seven fifty eight degree centigrade. Okay, seven fifty eight degree centigrade. So I hope it is clear. This question is always asked in the examination. In the examination. Thank you, Sita. Thank you. Thank you. You always motivate you. Me, but you are late again. In your class, you are late again. Okay, but no problem. Okay, Vita. So uh, thank you, Isida. So this is the question related to your conduction chapter. Okay, conduction chapter. This is your question related to the conduction chapter in which the base plate is there and there is a constant heat flux. Okay. Now we take a next problem. You have to take a next problem. Yes, yes, this is your problem. Okay, beta. So this is your problem, which is related to see there is any see beta in the winter season. In the winter season, we are applying a form on inside the wall so that the room gets warmer. Room gets warmer so beta there is a bricks there is a wall in which there is a bricks and there is a plaster in between between that there is a plaster and this is your inner side and this is your outer side outer side have a cold or inner side have a hot to 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 re, to resist the minimum to minimum heat loss from inside to the wall to the outside the wall we have to require a layer of a form and that layer of a form to resist the heat flow from inside to outside or outside to the inside okay so what is the, the question is asking that a 4 meter height a 4 meter height and 6 meter wide wall consist of a 18 centimeter cross 30 centimeter cross section of a horizontal bricks that means there is a bricks and bricks have a diameter a dimension it is given what is the dimension given beta 18 centimeter cross 30 centimeter right horizontal bricks and the bricks material have a thermal conductivity it is given 0.72 watt per meter degree centigrade separated by that means this bricks mother first brick to the consequent bricks they are separated by this 3 centimeter thick of plaster layer that means in the bricks first brick and secondary bricks we, when you joined you must be a we must be a lapping of a plaster and that plaster the thickness of the plaster in between that bricks it is given how much how much it is given beta two two centimeter thickness two centimeter thickness it is given on each side of the wall and two centimeter thickness of rigid to an form there is a two centimeter thickness a form it is given see this is a why this is see, see the beauty this the, the thermal conductivity the thermal conductivity is very minimum as compared to other material why because there is a insulator it is act as a insulating material no problem the inner side of the wall the inner door and outer door temperature it is given inner door is 22 degree centigrade and outer door is a minus 4 degree centigrade that means this is your warmer side and this is your colder side and the convection heat transfer coefficient of the inner and outer side it is given inner side it is 10 outer side it is 20 right no problem respectively assuming one dimensional heat transfer that means heat transfer in a one dimensional one direction disregarding the radiation that means we have to disregard we have to neglect the radiation effect from the surface to the surrounding we don't want bother about the radiation heat transfer the rate of heat transfer through the wall we have to calculate what is the rate of 
heat transfer that means what is the rate that means the see beta inner side have a high temperature and outer side have a low temperature so heat must be flow from inside to outside so what is the rate of heat transfer they are asking what is the rate of heat transfer they are asking so first read the question carefully see this question is always asked in two mark and it is your NAT type question it is your NAT type question okay so first we draw first we draw the bricks position okay no problem at all see this is your brick see beta very important this is your bricks this is your bricks right and that bricks this is your bricks and that in that brick there is a form there is a layer of form there is a layer of form this is a form form and that form have a thickness that form have a thickness 2 centimeter and the bricks thickness this is your thickness of a bricks and over the bricks beta over the bricks there is a there is a plaster there is a plaster there is a plaster over the brick there is a plaster this is your plaster this is your plaster and the thickness of this plaster is 1.5 centimeter right and this is also 1.5 centimeter and this is your 30 30 centimeter inner side temperature it is given t infinite 1 it is given 20 degree centigrade and h1 is given 10 this side is given t infinite 2 it is given minus 10 degree centigrade and and h2 it is given 25 okay beta now first we draw a thermal circuit what is that there is one surrounding you have to draw here no problem there is one surrounding temperature which is t infinite okay now from that t infinite to the convection to the form now from the form in between the form now from the form there is a bricks but from the bricks there are two again resistance which is in connected in parallel so there is a parallel resistance now again there is a bricks uh, plaster again there is a surrounding t infinite this is your thermal circuit ha ultimate uh, you back okay beta so this is your thank you beta thank you so this is your thermal circuit so this is your question beta this is your question okay just snap and just solve it okay So, this is your re resistance. Now, this is your inner side resistance Ri. This is your R1. This is your R2. This is your one second. This is your Ri, R1. Oh, there is also a, there is a plaster. Na? See very carefully. See, there is a form, then there is a plaster, then there is a bricks, then again there is a plaster, then again there is a surrounding. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 resistance are in parallel and 1, 2, 3. 3 resistance are series. So, it is little bit mistake here what is that see there is this is form and there must be a one there must be a one plaster also so this is your surrounding then there is a see so how can we make see 
it is something mistake little bit no problem at all no problem at all see this is your inner side t infinite 1 this is your inner side t infinite 1 now from the t infinite 1 there is a surrounding there is a surrounding resistance that means natural convection resistance now from the natural convection resistance to the form so this is your form that means insulation is there from the insulation there is again plaster so there is a plaster now from the plaster to the bricks from the plaster to the bricks above the bricks there is a plaster below the bricks there is a plaster so above the brick there is a plaster below the brick there is a plaster now from the brick to the form uh, to the plaster from the brick to the plaster now from the plaster to the surrounding this is your resistance Huh, sir, why we, you are considering the convective resistance for the, uh, oh, no, yes, beta, see, this is your material, na. this is your material, na. why, because the surrounding temperature it is given, surrounding temperature it is given, and convective heat transfer given, so resistance is, convective resistance always take, see, this is your, there is a convection, na. Why? Because T surrounding it is given, H value is given. So, we can consider the surrounding resistance also. We can consider the surrounding resistance. See, T beta. See, this is your bricks now. This is your bricks. Now, the surrounding inside temperature it is given. This is your inside, let us suppose it is given. So, inside resistance, then in, from inside to the form, form to the plaster, plaster to the bricks, bricks to the plaster, and plaster to the outside. Huh, that is a convection resistance. Great, great ultimate racer. Ultimate racer, you are great. So, surrounding temperature if the surrounding temperature is given and convective heat transfer coefficient it is given so you always taken care right okay so this is your resistance now <coughs> this is your r i inner radius re resistance this is your r1 this is your form resistance this is your plaster resistance r2 this is your r Three. This is your R four. This is your R five. This is your R six, and this is your R O. Outer resistance. Okay. Now, what is R I beta? What is R I? R I is your R convection of inner side, and this is what one upon H I into A area is same this area and this area is same so do not write a1 a2 a3 okay put all this value if you put all this value 1 upon see very carefully what is h10 and what is the area beta here what is the area what is the area this area that means what is the length what is the length, height and perpendicular to the board perpendicular to the board so this is your 1 why because the perpendicular to the board it is not given so you put 1 that means this this one this one so this is not given so put 1 and this is your height it is given so this is your area frontal area over which heat will transfer so what is this height is given beta this height is what is given see this height why because we taking this one only this length this length we take this length this portion we have taken taken this portion we have taken this portion so this height is what 30 centimeter converts 30 centimeter uh, 30 this 30 and plus 1.5 plus 1.5 yani 30 32 33 
30 and 1.5, 1.53, 1.5, Why? Because we take this, this much of the system. So, what is the height? Height is 30 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 yani kitna how much 33 convert into this is your centimeter convert into meter so this is your 0 0.33 0 0.33 this is your what is the resistance then this is your how much 0 0.303 degree centigrade per unit watt now ri what is r1 R1 is L upon Ka. What is R1 beta? R1 is what? R of form. R of form. Form resistance. R of form. Now R of form is what? L upon K into A. What is the form length? Form, form length previous. What is the form length? 2 centimeter. This is I think 2 centimeter. So, 2 centimeter is what? 0 0.02 meter. It is length. And what is your length divided by K? K is the thermal conductivity of the form and thermal conductivity of the form it is given 0 0.026. Now, and what is the area? Area is this form. What is the form? Area of this height. Area of this height. Height is what beta? 0.33 meter into perpendicular to the board 1. So, it is what beta? So, it is L. L is your 0 0.02 divided by thermal conductivity 0 0.026 into area 1 cross 0.33. Now, if you can solve this is your 2.33 degree centigrade per unit watt. So, you have to calculate Ri and now we calculate R1, now we calculate R2. R2 is what beta? R2 is the plaster. It is your plaster. So, plaster is what? This is your plaster. This is your plaster beta. This is your plaster. This is your plaster. Yes or not? This is your plaster. So, plaster, when you consider R plaster, so this plaster beta, this is your R2. R i, R 1, R 2, R 3, R 3, R 4, R 5, R 6. So, R, R 2 and R 6 are same. Why? Because this plaster, see, this plaster, just this plaster, see, this plaster and this plaster have a same dimension, yes or not? So, this is your R2 and this is your R6 and these two are same. These two are same. So, R2, if you calculate R2, R2 is equal to R6 and this is your R of plaster. R of plaster. What is R of plaster? L by K A. What is L of the plaster beta? L of the plaster C. What is the L of the plaster? What is the L of the plaster beta? Plaster length 2 centimeter. So, it is 0 0.02 meter. It is 0 0.02 meter, right? Now, L upon K. What is the K of the plaster? K of the plaster thin, thin 10 meter 6. What is the K of the plaster? Therm coefficient of the plaster. 6 meter itna itna so horizontal and is, uh, bricks itna separated. Thick meter of plaster. This is the thermal conductivity of the plaster. This is the thermal conductivity 0 0.2, 0 0.22 watt per meter degree. This is the plaster. Now, so L, L is 0 0.02 divided by K is this one into area. What is the area of the plaster beta? What is the area of the plaster? See, if you take this much height, why? Because this will this will include. See, if you take, see beta. This there is a one confusion. In the a student mind is what beta? If we take plaster at this much, 
if we take plaster dimension is this much and this plaster dimension is this much so this this will include in the r3 resistance r3 and this is your r3 so if we consider this length so this is your r3 if you consider this much of why because heat transfer through this one so heat transfer through this one there is a bricks this is our bricks so bricks plaster is left side bricks plaster is right side bricks above plaster is top side a bricks lower plaster is bottom side this is your dimension so if there is a if this is your bricks if this is your bricks so this is your top plaster this is your bottom plaster this is your side plaster and this is your right side plaster so right side plaster the length is 30 if you take top side plaster top top side plaster length is 1.5 if you consider area the area is what this height into perpendicular to the width the so 1.5 any point 0 0.015 into 1 for this plaster 0 0.15 into 1 this plaster for this plaster what is the area for this plaster what is the area 1 into 0 0.3 1 into 0 0.3 so this is your 0 0.3 na? this is your 0 0.3 height this is your what height this is your 1.5 any point what is the point 0.15 so one point this is your length this is your length this plaster this length this is your length so we calculate the area of all this now so if there is a plaster so r of plaster 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 side l upon k l is 0 0.02 divided by k is point 0.22 into dimension 1 into 0.3 this plaster how much this is this is your 0 0.303 degree centigrade per unit watt now r3 is what beta c r3 is what this is your r3 this is your r3 this is your r3 this is your r4 and this is your r5 yes or not so this is your r3 this is your r4 and this is your r5 so what is the r3 r3 is l upon k a l is this length l is this length k is the thermal conductivity of the plaster a area is this height into the width what is this height 1.15 into width is 1 so r3 is equal to r5 top and bottom of the bricks this is your r of plaster top and bottom is equal to l l is 0.18 c l is l this one this one and this one is what 0.18 this one is this one is 0.18 this one is 0.18 because 18 centimeter it is given so this is your k.22 into 1 plus area 0 0.0015 sorry point 0.015 so this is what beta if you calculate this is your 54.55 degree centigrade per unit watt now r4 is what r of brick and brick is equal to l 0 0.18 0.72 thermal conductivity into 1 into 0 0.3 height this is your 0.383 3 degree centigrade per unit watt okay so this is your now outer radius outer resistance ro is equal to r of 
convection outside outside with that means ro this is what the h upon 1 upon h2 into a 1 upon what is h2 beta h2 is 25 what is a total is 1 cross 0.33 take a dimension this is your 0 0.152 degree centigrade per unit watt right so see this is your this is your in series this is your in series this is your series so this is your middle so r of middle r of middle is equal to r 1 by r 3 plus 1 by r 4 plus 1 by r 5 and you calculate this equivalent resistance now we connect all this in parallel series so this is your parallel and this is your write down r of middle so 1 by r of middle so 1 by r of middle is equal to 1 by r3 1 by r4 1 by r5 right if you put all this value so 1 r middle is is equal to 0 0.81 degree centigrade per unit watt so the now resistance is see this is our r i this is your t infinite i r i r of form r of plaster r of middle r of plaster r of outside this is your resistance so t infinite so this is your r of middle r of middle this is your r o r r i r 1 r 2 r of middle r this is your r 5 3 4 5 this is your r 6 and this is your r o this is in series this is in series so put all the value r of total so this is your 4.201 degree centigrade per unit watt now put the heat transfer is what t infinite 1 minus t infinite 2 divided by r of total so from here we can calculate the what is the heat transfer so from here it is 1.69 watt you have r infinite 1 you have r infinite 2 and divided by r total so you have heat transfer 6.19 now the total area a is what is the total area 4 cross 6 is equal to 24 centimeter square this is the total area why because this is your per centimeter square this is your per how much area it is it is a 0.33 centimeter square but the total area is point total area is 24 meter square this is 24 meter square so put all these values so total heat transfer total heat transfer is 6.19 divided by 0.33 into 24 this is your 450 watt this is your answer this is a very big question here this is a very big question but this have to be practiced in that you can never find any difficulty difficulty to take the any dimension of the given figure so this is the questions at the point of view so that you cannot get confused for that dimension taking point of view okay beta now next problem yes this is a problem of a heat exchanger this is the problem of a heat exchanger so there is one option is missing beta one option is missing here what is that one option is missing here okay one option is missing here now what is they asking this is the option like that one second i have option this is the typing error beta right so 
कंसीडर ए वाटर टू वाटर काउंटर फ्लो हीट एक्सचेंजर Consider a water to water counter flow heat exchanger with this specification. What is the specification? It is given. What is the specification? It is given, beta. What is the specification? I give you. No problem. Water to water with this specification. What is that? I am giving you. Hot water enters at 95 degree centigrade. That means 95 degree centigrade hot water enter, while the cold water enter 20. Degree centigrade, twenty degree centigrade. The cold water enter. Okay, the exit temperature of the hot water it is given. That means exit temperature it is given. Exit temperature of the hot water is fifty. Exit temperature is fifteen degree greater than the cold water temperature. That means what is the cold water temperature? That temp that the temperature of hot water is fifteen degree greater. right and the product of heat transfer surface area and the overall heat transfer coefficient it is given yani u into a it is given taking the specific heat of both hot and cold fluid it is 4180 joule per kg kelvin which of the following this is your msq type question msq multiple select question MSQ type question, which of the following is or are are correct, right? What is that? Option it is given. The outlet temperature of the cold water, outlet temperature of the cold water, it is given fifty six degree centigrade. Whether it is correct or not, we will check. Now, what is given? The coefficient, the effectiveness of the heat exchanger, the effective. This question is related to beta. effectiveness and ntu method effectiveness and ntu method this is your effectiveness and ntu method type question okay the effectiveness of the heat exchanger effectiveness of the heat exchanger it is 0.48 whether it is correct or not we'll check and the mass flow rate of the this is given beta what is that Mass flow rate of the cold water it is point one four six point four one six kg per second and and option D option D it is given with a the heat transfer rate heat transfer rate is sixty two point six kilowatt whether it is correct or not we'll check. Read the question carefully. Read the question carefully. Read the question carefully, beta. So let's see. So this is your beta <coughs> heat exchanger. This is the question related to heat exchanger in which one fluid is a hot fluid and other fluid is cold fluid, right? so there is a concentric pipe over which there is a one fluid is and there is also there is a annular section annular section that means pipe in the pipe then inside the pipe there is one fluid outside that annular space there is another other fluid also so what is that beta see see this is your pipe okay this is a one pipe and in between that there is another pipe there is another pipe there is a heat exchanger tubes there is another pipe right this is in which there is a cold fluid there is a cold fluid and inside there is a hot fluid there is a hot fluid okay now cold fluid entry is 20 degree centigrade cold fluid entry is 20 degree centigrade this is like that if you make this diagram like that there is above circle there is a 
लोअर सर्किट ओके बेटा इन विच देर इज ए हॉट फ्लूड एंड ओवर विच देर इज ए कोल्ड फ्लूड ओवर विच देर इज ए कोल्ड फ्लूड राइट सो दिस इज योर कोल्ड फ्लूड आउटलेट दिस इज योर कोल्ड फ्लूड आउटलेट एंड दिस इज योर हॉट फ्लूड इनलेट एंड एग्जिट सो हॉट फ्लूड इनलेट is 95 this is 95 degree centigrade and hot fluid exit is hot fluid inlet hot fluid there is a cold fluid and there is a hot fluid inlet and the hot fluid exit is 95 plus 15 degree it is given and this is your 110 degree centigrade it is given and this is your given so hot fluid inlet cold fluid inlet and cold fluid exit sorry cold fluid previous see hot fluid enters 95 degree centigrade hot fluid enters hot fluid enters 95 degree centigrade right and cold fluid enters cold fluid while the cold fluid enters 20 degree centigrade okay no problem so entry of hot fluid entry of cold fluid it is given no problem at all while while beta cold ha huh, now now the exit temperature of hot fluid hot fluid exit temperature is 15 degree centigrade greater than the cold water of exit temperature so cold water exit temperature is what is not given is not given cold water exit temperature it not given so cold water outlet is not given so the hot water exit so the hot water exit is equal to exit is equal to 15 plus hot cold water exit this is given the question language is very carefully you may read the language is very carefully beta otherwise you do a mistake so what is given here the exit temperature of hot water the exit temperature of hot water is 15 degree greater than 15 degree greater than the cold water exit so this is your exit temperature of hot water now okay now it is okay so this is your hot water right so if you make this diagram no problem so there is a counter flow so this is your hot fluid this is your hot fluid so hot fluid inlet thi hot fluid exit the and there is a cold fluid there is a cold fluid the cold fluid inlet and the cold fluid exit and what is given what is given beta see the hot fluid inlet is 95 degree centigrade right hot fluid outlet is 15 degree greater than the cold fluid outlet cold fluid inlet it is 20 degree centigrade but the cold fluid outer is not given it is not given beta right so first we find the exit temperature of the cold fluid how to find what is the energy will release by the hot fluid will accepted by the cold fluid so we make energy balance so we make energy balance that means heat release that means energy released by the hot fluid is equal to the energy gain by the cold fluid so the heat released by the hot fluid is what mass flow rate of hot fluid 
specific heat of the hot fluid into temperature difference. This equal to the heat gain by the cold fluid is what? Mass flow rate of the cold fluid, specific heat of the cold fluid and difference of the temperature. And if from that equation, we can easily find what is the exit temperature of the cold fluid what is the exit temperature of the cold fluid so the exit so how can we find energy balance energy balance energy balance what is the energy balance beta heat released by the hot fluid is equal to heat gain by the cold fluid heat released by the hot fluid mass flow rate of the hot fluid cp of the hot fluid temperature always higher minus lower that means thi minus the is equal to mass flow rate of the cold fluid cp of the cold fluid and temperature difference of the hot cold fluid that means higher minus lower the minus tci and all the parameter it is given all the parameter is given uh, now, the, if we find the mass flow rate, it is given or not, we will check, no problem. Mass flow rate, it is given. Okay, no problem. So, it is given beta like that. Both the specific heat are same. First, it is given. Now, now. Now, what is given beta? What is given? What is given? Okay, no problem. And take it is given beta in the question. Data is missing, but the given the question is what? Mass flow rate of the hot fluid is equal to one point mass flow rate of the hot fluid is equal to one point five of mass flow rate of the cold fluid. It is given beta. And surface area into overall heat transfer coefficient is equal to 1400 it is also given and cp of the hot fluid is equal to cp of the cold fluid it is also given 4180 joule per kg kelvin okay now mass of the hot fluid in place of hot fluid we put 1.5 of the cold fluid we multiply and from here we find mass flow rate of cold fluid it is your so it is cancelled now no problem mass flow rate of hot fluid is put so mass flow rate of cold fluid and mass flow rate of cold fluid we cancel so it is 1.5 now we can find the cold fluid exit temperature so cold fluid exit temperature it is your 56 degree centigrade so the option a is correct so the option a is correct no problem at all now so see 56 degree centigrade now next option the effectiveness of the heat exchanger see my dear what is the effectiveness of the heat exchanger effectiveness of the heat exchanger is what beta what is the effectiveness of the heat exchanger what is the effectiveness of the heat exchanger? Effectiveness. See, very important. Effectiveness E is what beta actual. See, when there is a heat exchanger, so what is the actual heat heat will transfer, and what is the maximum heat will transfer? That means what your what is your effectiveness? The effectiveness is what you actually work, and what the maximum you have to work that ratio is known as effectiveness of anything so the actual heat transfer divided by maximum heat transfer actual heat transfer divided by the maximum heat transfer see very carefully beta you know what is the maximum heat transfer maximum heat transfer is equal to maximum temperature difference and what is the maximum temperature difference in the heat exchanger hot temperature inlet minus cold temperature inlet this range is the maximum temperature hot fluid temperature at inlet and cold fluid temperature at the inlet this temperature difference is the maximum temperature difference that means thi minus TCI, but there is a heat, so we multiply specific heat. 
so for that we multiply minimum why we multiply minimum this all will discuss in the detail in when we, we are discussing in the regular classes why we take the minimum specific heat when we calculate the maximum heat transfer these all these all the concepts will discuss already in the classes now this actual heat transfer is according to the energy balance that means heat transfer by the cold fluid is equal to heat transfer by the hot fluid now if there what is this without this is the heat capacity see there are three things in the heat exchanger frequently come into picture see beta what is three things see very carefully first is your cp second is your c minimum and third is your c what is the three thing cp is the specific heat C is the minimum specific minimum. This is the minimum capacity. Minimum capacity and C is the capacity ratio. Capacity ratio. This this capacity ratio. C is the capacity ratio and this capacity ratio is C minimum by C maximum. this capacity ratio c minimum by so don't confuse with that if you calculate the effectiveness always taken into c minimum and if what is the c minimum c is what beta mass flow rate into cp so there are co uh, two fluid fluid in the heat exchanger is two type one is the cold fluid other is the hot fluid one is the cold fluid other is the hot fluid cold fluid have what is the c m dot c c p c what is the hot fluid c m dot h c p h in which we calculate and to take which value of a c minimum if you calculate mass flow rate of cold fluid into cp of the cold fluid if you calculate mass flow rate of hot fluid and cp of the salt fluid and we select which of the c is minimum then put here if we take c m dot c and cp c is minimum so from here energy balance you can take energy of a cold fluid if m dot h cp h is minimum so from here we take hot fluid heat transfer so that the calculation is easy and some pa some uh, terms will cancel from top uh, nominator to denominator so we calculate c minimum right so c minimum we calculate c minimum and c minimum calculation first calculate cp so m dot what is m dot this is your cp is what 4.18 m dot c and what is m dot cp m dot h cph this is your 1.5 m dot c into 1 4.18 if you calculate this is your 6.27 m dot c see the beauty see the beauty beta if there is a m dot c 1 4.18 m dot c is the cold fluid c 6.27 m dot c is the hot fluid of c which is the minimum the minimum is this one so we take here we take here we take here with a c minimum 4.18 m dot c and this temperature as it is so from here we can take cold fluid from here we can take cold fluid and we if we divide that so the, finally there is a temperature is coming to picture and if you put that the value is 1 4.8 the value is 4.8 all the temperature you know put all this thing m dot c up from here m dot c is cancel out cpc you have and temperature difference cold fluid what is the temperature difference t cold exit minus t cold inlet from that we could put all this value given data and if we select solve it so it is your 
उंटर फ्लो हिट एक्सचेंजर काउंटर फ्लो हीट एक्सचेंजर व्हाट इज दैट बेटा इफेक्टिवनेस वी नो दैट वन माइनस एक्सपोनेंशियल इनटू माइनस एन यू वन माइनस सी डिवाइडेड बाय वन माइनस सी ऑफ एक्सपोनेंशियल माइनस एन यू वन माइनस सी बेटा दिस फॉर्मूला यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर this is for counter flow this is for counter flow okay now what is the c here c is the capacity ratio so c is your c minimum by c maximum what is your c minimum beta 4.18 m dot of c what is c maximum 6.27 m dot of c solve this one this is 0.66 now effectiveness you have 0.48 one minus exponential minus ntu one minus 0.66 you have put this one divided by one minus c 0.66 exponential minus ntu one minus 0.66 put here and from this one you can calculate ntu from here what is ntu ntu you have 0.805 no problem at all this is your ntu now as we know that what is ntu beta number of transfer in it as into u by c minimum this is this formula you have to remember it what is ntu surface area into overall heat transfer coefficient by c minimum right so you have a surface area into overall heat transfer coefficient in this question you have see the beauty of this question this is given see heat transfer surface area and overall heat transfer coefficient it is given 1400 1400 so it is your One four double zero divided by C minimum is what M dot C into four one eight zero, right? So put here from this equation you have NTU, and from these two equations solve and find mass of flow rate of cold fluid. This is your point four one six kg per second. So this this part is very important. this part is very important yes or not yes 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 sir this is the this is the very important equation if you don't know this equation you can never solve this problem in the examination so be careful how to find ntu method from ntu method you compare it and you can easily find the mass flow rate of the cold fluid you can easily find the mass flow rate of the cold fluid now next what is they asking next heat transfer what is that heat transfer so for heat transfer option number d what is the heat transfer beta heat transfer is take any any one of the question mass flow rate of the cold fluid cp of the cold fluid t exit of the cold fluid t exit of the cold fluid minus t cold fluid inlet put all this value mass flow rate just now you calculate it 1.46 cp is 4180 t exit temperature 56 inlet temperature 
put all this value, this is your 62.5 kilowatt. So, check it is correct or not. Huh, 62.5. So, option A, B and C and D all are correct. So, A, B, C and D all are correct. See the beauty. So, this is your heat exchanger problem. This is your heat exchanger problem. So, in the heat exchanger, you must be Thoroughly hard, uh, thoroughly learn about the how to inter, uh, how to link between effectiveness and NTU method. So from that effectiveness, there is uh, NTU it in, involved, and what is the NTU? NTU is the overall heat transfer coefficient into surface area divided by C minimum. Always mind it, and C minimum you calculate from the specific heat relation mass flow rate of the cold fluid, specific heat of the cold fluid, mass flow rate of the hot fluid, specific heat of the cold fluid, choose and select whether is the minimum and that minimum you can put. Okay. Now, next problem. This is your next one. This is a little bit easy problem. Just solve. This is your beta little bit easy, easiest problem. So, this is your problem. If the Nusselt number n u for the heat transfer in a pipe varies with the Reynolds number r e as uh, n u cross r e p power 0.8. This is a 0.8. Okay. So, Reynolds number, Reynolds number varies n u cross like that. Then the constant average velocity in the pipe is then the constant average velocity what is the co co convective then the convective it is not average velocity beta. that means convective the pipe coefficient very huh? then the constant average velocity in the pipe okay beta? constant average velocity the heat transfer coefficient vary with the pipe diameter how it is very option it is minus 1.8 this is your minus 0.2 this is your 0.2 and this is your 1.2 it. So, this is your A, this is your B, C and D. Okay, beta? So, how it is vary? See, what is no, that Nusselt number is varies, Nusselt number is varies Reynolds per power 0.8. It is given in the question, right? What is the Nusselt number? Internal flow HD upon K. What is the Reynolds number? rho v average d upon mu a power 0.8 right so from d and d you have to so <coughs> all the parameter are fixed <coughs> so d from d we have to relation heat transfer coefficient varies as the pipe diameter heat transfer coefficient varies the pipe pipe diameter take all the thing and you have to take like that h d directly proportional to the pipe diameter d k power 0.8. So, if you do that, so h is directly proportional to d p power 0.8 minus 1. So, h is directly proportional to d p power 0.2. That is it minus 0.2. So, option b is correct. So, option b is correct. This is the very simple example. This is again very simple example. This is again a completely opaque medium, a completely opaque medium. If 50 percent of the incident monochromatic radiation is absorbed, that means if there is a any radiation will incident, then there is a 50 percent will absorb, right? Or what is the medium? Opaque medium. And what is the opaque medium? Eta? opaque that means non transparent medium that means from the opaque medium the medium that will no any transmittivity it will absorb when the radiation will incident on that surface surface and absorb and reflect it never will transmit 
opaque medium it never be transmit so no incident radiation is transmitted this is the itself characteristic of the opaque surface so mind it it is correct so opaque surface that means this is the opaque surface that means no incident radiation will transmit that means this is your surface beta if this is your surface what is the radiation is incoming some is absorbing and other is reflecting so it is said that 50 percent incident radiation will absorb that means 50 percent will absorb then 50 percent will transmit 50 percent will transmit so 50 percent of incident radiation will reflect this is the reflection so option p is also correct p is also correct so s and p are correct so option a is correct so option a is reflected so this this is your reflected okay this is absorbity so we know that transmittivity is zero so alpha plus rho plus transmittivity is equal to 1 so tr there is no any transmittivity so alpha plus absorbity is equal to 1 so alpha alpha reflectivity e rho is the reflectivity alpha is the absorbity so this is your 50 plus rho is equal to 1 so rho is equal to 50 that means 50 percent will reflect 50 percent will reflect so s p and s is correct option number a is correct so this is also very simple problem no problem at all now we will take another problem yes this is your fin problem fin this is the problem of fin fin what is that beta a straight fin of uniform cross section that means there is a fin of uniform cross section there is a fin of uniform cross section uniform cross section the fin have uniform cross section the fin have uniform cross section and adiabatic tip that means from the tip there is no any heat transfer from the adiabatic tip that means the, this is your fin circular fin it is attached on the base plate and from that base plate there is heat will transfer but from the fin there is from the fin tip this is your tip of the fin and this is your base of the fin so base is attached on the base plate and on the tip on the tip there is no any heat transfer on the tip there is no any heat transfer so heat transfer from the tip is zero and expect ratio expect ratio is what length by diameter that means what is the length of this fin and divided by the di di diameter it is given by 4 if the biot number see the beauty there is a confusion is here from the student if the biot number based on the radius of the fin that means biot number in the biot number beta there is a one characteristic length so characteristic length based upon the radius of the fin it is not a diameter at characteristic length right is 0.4 right so the based on the biot number so biot number it is given 0.4 okay beta the effectiveness of the heat exchanger round off it now so this is beta nat type question right so what is given beta c it is given ex expect ratio so sometime it is not in it is not given in the so language so easiest manner so expect ratio you know that what is the expect ratio expect ratio is length of the fin divided by diameter of the fin it is given four right and biot number it is your h l c upon k h l c upon k k is what k is the thermal conductivity of the body k is the thermal see what is the biot number beta biot number by h l c upon k k is the solid k is the solid and l c it is given according to the radius so h r by k of the solid is given so biot number h r by k how much it is given it is given beta 0 0.04 0 0.04 from these two data this is very important question from these two data you have to find the efficiency of the fin 
you have to find the efficiency of the fin and efficiency of the fin from the adiabatic tip adiabatic tip is what beta ten of hyperbolic function m into l divided by m l this is for adiabatic tip efficiency this is your adiabatic tip efficiency now what is m you have to calculate it now what is m m is hindustan petroleum that means hp upon kac hp upon kac what is h convective heat transfer coefficient what is p perimeter of that fin k is the thermal conductivity and a is the cross section area a is what beta cross section area of the fin right so first we calculate this is your m so first what is your h is at it is perimeter if there is a circle if there is a circle so perimeter is pi into d why because there is a fin and fin have a cross section circle circle cross section fin have a circular cross section so perimeter is pi into d divided by thermal conductivity of the fin material into cross section area pi by 4 d square cross section area pi by 4 d square now you arrange it this is your 4 h by k into d my dear i am requesting to remember this formula in the examination you don't put extra effort to calculate this there is a standard geometry is the cylinder so for the cylindrical fin 4h upon kd 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 right now now we have to manipulate it what is that see m is the see ml you multiply m into l so you have to find m into l na beta in the efficiency you have find m into l na so from the m into l you have just multiply m into l so it is a square root so it is in the square root 4 h l square you multiply l here so we take l into the square root it is l square divided by k into d now we arrange it h now we arrange k into d we arrange like that root under h by k l by d into 4 l like that into 4 l you can arrange like that into 4 l now put this if you put this one why because we know that the beta expect ratio l is equal to 4 d l is equal to 4 d so from here L is equal to 4 D, 4, 4 is a 16 into D. So, this is your, from this one, we can put 16 into D, 16 into D. Why? Because L by D is equal to 4. It is given. So, from here, we can write like that in terms of R. So, in terms of R, if you put R here, D is equal to 2 R. So, 16 into 2 is 32 into r so put in terms of r so d is equal to r put all and h r upon k l by d into 32 right um, now h r by k you have a biot number thank you sir you have a biot number what is your biot number biot number it is given what is the biot number 0 0.04 what is the biot number? 0 0.04. So this is your, this is your 0 0.04. This is your 0 0.04. You put all this thing in square root of 0 0.04 into L by D. L by D you have a 4 into 32. Multiply this one. You have to 2.2627. Two point two six seven. This is your right answer. Okay, my dear. This is your 
राइट आंसर ओके दिस इज योर राइट आंसर नाउ विल टेक द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम दिस इज योर नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम जस्ट रीड केयरफुली जस्ट रीड केयरफुली आई गिव यू टू मिनट फॉर द रीड एंड वॉट यू आस्क जस्ट रीड केयरफुली जस्ट रीड बेटा केयरफुली ओके वेलकम बैक बेटा तो दिस इज क्वेश्चन ए दिस इज अगेन योर दिस इज योर हिट एक्सचेंजर अगेन द क्वेश्चन इज हिट एक्सचेंजर बट देर इज अ डिफरेंट मोड दिस इज अ कंडक्टेशन प्रॉब्लम लाइक ए कंडक्शन दैट मीन्स वन फ्लूड हैव इट्स चेंज इट्स फेज ड्यूरिंग द फेज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन देर इज अ लेटेंट हिट विल ट्रांसफर एंड फ्रॉम दैट लेटेंट हिट वी कैन यूज द वी कैन यूज द हिट फॉर द टेम्परेचर फॉर द चेंज ऑफ टेम्परेचर ऑफ द अदर फ्लू राइट सो ए हॉट ऑयल इज टू बी कूल्डेड बाई ए वॉटर ए हॉट ऑयल इज कूल्डेड बाई ए वॉटर इन ए सेल ट्यूब हीट एक्सचेंजर दिस इन विच वन सेल एंड देर आर एट ट्यूब्स पासिस हीट एक्सचेंजर द ट्यूब्स आर थिन वेल्डेड एंड आर मेड ऑफ ए कॉपर विथ इंटरनल डायमीटर The tube diameter is given 1.4 centimeter. Okay, length. The length of each tube passes of heat exchanger is 5 meter. Now, the overall heat transfer coefficient it is also given. Water flow through the tubes at a rate. Mass flow rate is also given. The oil through the cell at the rate. That means mass flow rate of one fluid and mass flow rate of other fluid is also given. The water and oil enters at the temperature 20 degree centigrade and 150 degree centigrade respectively the outlet temperature of water and oil are r outlet temperature you have to find it cp of the water and cp of the oil it is given okay no problem so just we find it so beta this is your cell tube type heat exchanger this is your cell tube type heat exchanger right in which there is a eight tubes so there is a one tubes two three four five six seven and eight right so in which there is a oil is entering this is a oil and i'll have a mass flow rate of 0.3 kg per second okay and this in this there is a exit from the oil and this is our water that means this is exit and oil exit now water inlet here it is and this is your 20 degree centigrade and this is a exit of the water that is given and the mass flow rate is also given how much 0.2 kg per second sorry it is not a uh, uh, question like that thank you atul it is not question like that at uh, transformation of heat conduction it is look like a cell tube passes so this beta this is one cell and eight tubes and this will be very effective when we transfer a heat why because there are a multiple pass you make another cell also two cell 
n number of tube, three cell, four cell. So this is one cell. This is one cell, and number of tubes is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In that there is a water. In that there is a water, I think, and in the cell there is a oil. No problem. So first we calculate a specific heat of the hot fluid. Mass flow rate hot fluid, Cp of the hot fluid. If you calculate all this thing, mass flow rate of hot fluid is what? 0.3. Cp of the hot fluid is what? 2.13 it is given. Calculate this thing 0.639 watt per kilowatt. This is your kilowatt. 393 kilowatt per degree centigrade. What is the heat capacity of the cold fluid? mass flow rate of the cold fluid cp of the cold fluid put all this value of the cold fluid this is your 0.836 kilowatt per degree centigrade see the beauty which is minimum hot fluid is a minimum heat capacity that means this is your c minimum this is your c minimum and this is your c maximum so now you can easily find capacity ratio c the capacity ratio is what c is what beta capacity ratio you find c is c minimum by c maximum so from here we can find this c now what is your surface maximum heat transfer maximum heat transfer you have to find c minimum by maximum temperature difference t of hot inlet minus t of cold inlet so you have this one c minimum is what beta c minimum is 0.639 hot fluid inlet is 150 cold fluid inlet is 20 degree you can find it this is your 83.1 kilowatt so what is the heat transfer this is your heat transfer now <coughs> now we can find the total surface area total surface area is number of tubes 8 and uh, uh, cross section area of each tube uh, perimeter uh, uh, surface area that means what is the surface area a is total surface area is number of tube 8 into pi d into l you have 8 and pi d you have how much d beta d is 0 0.014 what is L? L is 5. So, what is the surface area? 1.76 meter square. Now, you can easily find NTU. What is NTU beta? What is NTU? AS into U by C minimum. Right? C minimum. So, you have a C, uh, AS 1.76. You have U 310. And what is the C minimum beta? point c minimum you have c minimum you have c minimum you have point six nine six three nine point six nine is point six three nine point six three nine point six three nine into ten to the power three why because it is in kilowatt so it is converted into what so it is over point eight five four right what is the capacity ratio what is the capacity ratio here if you find the capacity ratio, this is your 0.764. Now you have a capacity ratio. Now you have a capacity ratio. This is very important, I am telling you. Now you have a capacity ratio. C is your 0.764 and you have NTU. And you have NTU. What is NTU? Number of transfer unit. It is what? 1854. From these two relation we can easily find what is the effectiveness and the effectiveness is 0.47 once you find the effectiveness once you find the effectiveness you you can find the actual heat transfer why because beta we know that what is well what is the effectiveness heat actual divided by heat maximum so you have find actual heat transfer how to find maximum heat transfer you have already find the maximum heat transfer what is the maximum heat transfer this is your maximum heat transfer multiply with the 
effectiveness multiply with the effectiveness so you have actual heat transfer once you have find actual heat transfer you can find each and every parameter related to the heat exchanger no problem at all okay so so beta from this one you can find from this one you can find actual heat transfer from here q actual what is actual heat transfer we have a calculation about this is your 39.1 kilowatt this is the actual heat transfer 39 ha ha yes yes atul ha in the last in the last in the last we can uh, uh, thank you for remembering we can just um, finish the uh, questions we can upload that uh, we can just in, inform all the student what is the most important topic yes you are right this is very important discussion okay so this is your uh, uh, q actual now from the heat transfer you can easily find now what is the q actual energy balance is what mass flow rate of cold fluid cp of the cold fluid t cold fluid exit t cold fluid inlet is equal to mass flow rate of hot fluid cp of the hot fluid cp of the hot fluid t exit temperature uh, th isle inlet minus th exit now you have to find everything here now you have to find everything here mass flow rate you have all of this thing all so from this one you can find here from tc outlet is 66.8 degree centigrade tc outlet th outlet you have to find 88 degree centigrade all this thing you have okay i think today's it is sufficient for that how many question it is t one two three four five five six seven eight nine approximately nine question is there i'm done sure that beta in these questions you have find minimum Three to three marks. Two days you have a complete three marks. Tomorrow you have completed the three marks. Six marks minimum question will ask in the gate examination. See, one of the my friend is say that sir, please mention the important topic for the gate in heat transfer subject. See, this is the important subject. See, beta, heat transfer subject. The important see important topic is just. There are three modes conduction, convection, and radiation. So, in the conduction, you must have read lumped analysis, lumped analysis, and lumped analysis, and lumped analysis, and the what is the boundary condition, how to find that means steady state heat conduction. If you write like that, beta, don't worry, I am writing like no problem at all, I am right. So, if if we discussing about important topic, topic, important topic, number first, number first, steady state heat conduction, steady state heat conduction equation number second lumped analysis right number third pin that's it this is your conduction if there is a convection convection right only uh, internal force internal forced convection and physical mechanism physical mechanism of 
natural convection and you must read heat exchanger also this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 heat exchanger thoroughly in the heat exchanger you must read effectiveness and into method effectiveness and into method effectiveness and into method this is 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 heat exchanger and number 7 which is last in the last you go through the you go through the shape factor the view factor factor through radiation extraction a radiation heat exchange that's it radiation heat exchange these four topic again we will covering in the next tomorrow session 20 says 20 25th of december 20 20th of december at 6 pm sharp at 6 pm and we solve some more advanced problem so that your practice is up to very high level okay thank you atul thank you thanks for the session okay beta bye bye good night good night